everyone in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to duplicate an event so that you can uh, create an, one easily for yours because a lot of events that we're doing are recurring ones so I've already logged into my Eventbrite account and uh, if you're creating an event you should have a login if you don't have one you can contact uh, the office administrator at office at wcmc.ca and they can hook you up with that so what you need to do is once you're in here you need to go um, click the little uh, avatar icon there and select manage events and then what you can do is navigate to the past section uh, I'm duplicating one for uh, vacation bible camp so I will grab the most recent one 2016 click that and then select copy and then what this does is it copies the event with all of its relevant information, Vacation Bible Camp, but I'm going to do it for 2017. Uh, and this one, I'll just leave it as a test because I've already done it. the one that I'm going to use. So we'll copy that event, and then here we can um, proofread all of the relevant information that's there. Um, so we're going to change this so that it starts on July 17th, 2017 at uh, 9 a.m. You can do this um, for your event too. Um, July 21st, uh, 12 p.m. is when it ends. Uh, if you, you can, um, we need to remove this image in order to add a new one. And you'll see here that uh, the ratio is a 2 to 1 ratio. So if anyone's making graphics for you, just keep that in mind that it's a 2 to 1 ratio for it to look best on Eventbrite. So we'll hit remove that because that's the old logo. And then we just have to hit ev add event. And then you just navigate for where it is on your computer. I don't have one created for this yet, so we'll just leave it blank for now. And then the event description, this is... Um, like a word editor, it's called what you see is what you get. So it's a WYSIWYG, um, and it allows you to highlight and bold, um, add alignments, bulleted lists, change your font, change your font size. Uh, this one's a neat one here. This is a link button, so if you have a link to an external place, then what you do is you'd select that button. So say I want wackiness to go someplace, I can click this link here. It'll open up this box, and then I can say it's a YouTube video you want wackiness to go to. Uh, then you can just type youtube.com slash video, whatever it would be, and then select insert. And then it's asking me if I want to add the HTTP colon slash slash prefix, and the answer is yes, I do, because that's what computers need in order to recognize the www beforehand for these links. And you'll see here that it added a link there. Uh, if you've decided that you don't want it, and I've decided I don't want it, then all you need to do is right here beside it where it says unlink, select unlink. You can also add additional pictures here by uh, clicking there. And um, yeah, so that's how the WCMC.ca, that's um, how that was added with that link there. Um, make sure that your organizer name is correct. We do have WCMC Youth, Wilmot Worship, uh, multiple churches, etc. And then this is the church's Facebook. So we can move that. And then down here to where the tickets are. Um, if it's a paid event, you can change the fees here by just typing in something like 25 or whatever you decide. Uh, you also have the option of either absorbing the fees. Uh, Eventbrite charges about 99 cents plus I think it's 3 to 5 percent. Or maybe it's 7% or something like that um, per transaction and often we've passed that on to the uh, people that are registering just as it's a convenience fee but you can also do it that rather than us um, passing it on so that the buyer total is 2711 you can absorb it as well and that's um, down here pass fees on or absorb fees so now a $25 registration is $25 um, however we have to pay $2.11 out of it, so we get just under 23 bucks per person. 
Um, yeah. So this event is actually a free event though, so we're going to remove this ticket type and select OK. And then um, for the online RSVP, we're going to change that name to be online registration by July 7th. And maybe we'll put that that's the free t-shirt option if they register in time. Um, otherwise, we can't guarantee that they'll get a free t-shirt. And we'll say that maybe there's 100 available of that. And then we can add another type and do online registration after July 7th and uh, we can say that maybe we can take 40 more people after that no free t-shirt guaranteed um, so we'll do that um, and then under the ticket settings we can actually put when the ticket sales start or when the ticket sales end so we'll say that they start now would be fine so it um, but I think they're starting June 1st, so we'll skip ahead to June 1st, and they can start at 12.30 a.m., and then the ticket sales must, you'll see here it says the sales end time must be after the start time. So we can also just enter that they can register up till July 18th, which is actually the Tuesday, so we wouldn't want that. Um, so we'll bump that to the 16th, and we'll say that they can do it right up until noon on Sunday. And um, then it just says remove the ticket when it's not on sale, so that'll disappear as an option when it's not on sale. Um, and then for the no t-shirt guaranteed, we can do the same thing. Um, so we'll have the ticket sales, they can start, uh, I guess that's May 1st, but we'll do that. This one uh, starts after July 7th. So July 7th and the ticket sales end on July uh, 16th at noon. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this that July 7th is when those ticket sales end and then uh, this option will be available once that one is no longer available. So we have that the total capacity is 140. It can be a public page, which is anyone can search it anywhere, or you can have it uh, as a private page, only accessible to people you specify. So that's all of those things. And then you can save your event, which is a good option. And then um, you can also, you'll see that it's right here. It's a draft status, which means that it's not live. Um, if I click preview, it'll take me to a page that shows what it would look like for people that try to do it. And this is a good place where you can actually walk through the registration um, section. But you can't do it until it's on sale. But they can get details here um, of that. Um, if you want to see what it would look like for registration, you would have to change the on ticket settings here and make it available that they can start. Um, well, today is May 1st, so I'd need it to start. Um, I'll do April 30th so that I can definitely see it. And then I will save it. Select preview. And there's likely a way that you can also um, look at your registration as well um, and create it but because we're just duplicating this if I select the preview option and with the ticket being available I'll actually be able to walk through what a registration looks like for someone so they go to click register um, they can see what this is they will register one person here then when they go to checkout it will take them to the registration form and this is where you can uh, test everything out see that it's your name make sure that it makes sense home address uh, school grade going into and this is going to be checked because that won't make sense because it's a 2017 event um, and then once they complete all of these uh, ones that have a red star are asterisks um, those are required 
and uh, that will allow people to register. So there's some other options here too. That was on all of this was done under the editing section. There's also the design section, uh, which basically allows you to have different color schemes and different things like that. But you can pretty much leave that alone. Um, and with the manage event, this is where the power of Eventbrite really comes in um, because you can see who there's analytics and event reports and everything so you can actually see who's registering uh, all of those sort of things where they're coming from and um, also this is where you change the order form for the um, registrations so that's where you can put the first name last name suffix email and you can collect all this information if you want things that are on green are um, on these ones are obviously off um, yeah so if I see this one here I need to um, edit that one so that it says going into grade into September 2017 so I'll change that and then this also allows you to um, create different question types so radio buttons means that it's a list and they can select one of them but there's also different options where they can just enter text they can enter a paragraph text check boxes if there's multiple options um, a drop down so that's a list if there's one thing um, it's similar to what radio buttons would do it allows them to select one thing and then uh, a waiver as well so I'm gonna leave it as a waiver and then you can also add the conditional sub questions so what this one is is if they're registering for someone going into grade 7 it actually lets them know about um, the junior youth camp that we have for those going into grade 7, 8, and 9 as well so that's kind of a neat way that it keeps your form short but also gives information to those that might need it so you can use the conditional response as a benefit too so we'll hit save and yeah I think that's all we need to do um, yeah if you wanted to add something like the gender you could do that as well um, and you can have the included or the required and so a lot of these you want as the required um, so, yeah. Once you've done that, then you can hit save. And you're all set. When you're ready to go, you can make your event live by clicking Make Event Live, and then you'll be able to link to it as well. So, if you have any questions, um, you can email the office at wcmc.ca and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you out. Thanks.